This is Witchspace News for Friday the 3rd of June 2022 ...I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week ...the architects of the Azimuth narrative are interviewed on Frontiers livestream. There's a chance for you to get involved in a community search for a long lost planet and there's some serious coin up for grabs in this weeks community goal. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe and remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications and if you'd like to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. This week was Frontier Livestream week now that the flagship Frameshift Live is a fortnightly schedule. When they switched to a fortnightly format for the show the team did promise that one of their goals was to make the streams more information dense and meaningful and true to their word this week saw another developer interview aired as part of the stream. Dev interviews and any peeks behind the curtain at Frontier are always a community favourite and this weeks offering didn't disappoint. As the Azimuth saga begins to gather pace towards its presumed conclusion community manager Zach was joined by two members of the narrative team at Frontier Hannah Vardy and Ben Hennessy. Hannah is a graduate game designer who is relatively new to the Elite Dangerous team having joined 6 months ago working with the live game content team and Ben is the narrative designer for Elite Dangerous and is involved with just about any player facing text in the game and touches story, dialogue, missions and menus or anything that contains text or lore in the game including the creation of Galnet articles and things like discovered audio logs. As well as the raw creation of text and story the team talk about things like the process for recruiting acting talent to record audio logs and of course the creation of the Azimuth Saga which they describe as Elite's longest running primary narrative. Suffice to say it's a fascinating interview and well worth a listen. I've been really enjoying this new series of Frameshift Live. The production values of the streams have been significantly ramped up with flashy graphics and transitions and with the added bonus of Twitch drop delivered ship skins and other cosmetic items, the regular feed of developer interviews and of course community content make the streams a worthwhile fortnightly event. You'll find a link in the description below to a YouTube archive of the full 2 hour stream. The developer interview starts at around the 24 minute mark. On the 10th of July this year a rather unusual expedition will be getting underway and within it is an opportunity for an individual squadron or player group to make their mark on the galaxy of Elite Dangerous. Where a regular expedition may visit a number of previously discovered galactic hotspots or visit a specific region just to see what's there and take in the views the expedition at the Eldridge Gate is inviting individuals, squadrons and player groups to contribute in an organised and coordinated effort to explore a designated area of space in search of a specific lost world that hasn't been seen since an image of it was captured 7 years ago by a now inactive account. The striking luminous green gas giant was first discovered by Commander Kelly Eldridge who snapped the image of it but neglected to note the system name only sharing the image when a discussion about finding more green gas giants occurred on the official Frontier forums. The plan is for independent explorers, squadrons and player groups to be tasked with conducting a systematic search of the appropriate area of space where the image was taken and see if the world Kelly discovered all those years ago can be rediscovered and documented for everyone to enjoy. It would be fantastic to see this expedition succeed in its goals and bring a long lost galactic jewel back to the community. To get involved yourself or sign up your squadron or community group you'll find links to the expedition's official discord and everything else you need in the description below this video. There's two community goals underway this week and at least one of them is paying some serious coin for commanders involvement. The Artisifer's Dredger clan recently started repairing and upgrading the dormant Golconda generation ship in the Upaniklis system albeit uninvited by the Golconda's owners. 
If you're unfamiliar with the Golconda it's a genuine galactic rarity in the Elite Dangerous universe. A generation ship whose inhabitants weren't horribly killed by some sort of horrific virus, alien infestation or murderous apocalyptic death cult spawned from the ships many decades in the deep black. The generation ship program has to be the most unsuccessful exploration and colonization effort in the history of humanity with various nightmarish remnants of the participants, untimely horror movie endings littering the galaxy for players to discover. Even presenting as they do the opportunity for the bold commander to listen to audio logs of said untimely demise. The Golconda however is very much the black sheep of the family. Selfishly the Golconda emerged from its centuries long sojourn only to deposit its cargo of souls into the safety and comfort of the Upaniklis system where they remain cared for to this day. Really letting the side down. Despite no doubt being made aware of the fate of the rest of the generation ship program, inexplicably now that the Golconda has been refitted by the curiously generous Artisifers clan the ships former inhabitants seem keen to become its current inhabitants once again and, utilising a nice new shiny frameshift drive, are intent on heading out into the black. One can only presume to meet whatever fate the universe had in store for them originally, doing the decent thing and coming to a hilariously grisly, no doubt unusual and unnecessarily drawn out ending. Here's hoping anyway. To facilitate the end of everything they have come to cherish, the Golconda's crew are asking that the galaxy's independent pilots provide a number of commodities to enable the journey of their colossal galaxy hopping tomb in waiting and also provide security against pirates for those looking to make the deliveries. It's the request for tritium however to power the megalithic coffin into the stars that has drawn the community's attention. The community goal is buying tritium for an eye watering 413,656 credits per tonne. The galactic average for the carrier powering wonder juice is just 51,000 credits. All these telephone numbers combined mean that something like a modestly kitted out Type 9 for example can make around 272 million credits a run. It's a bank holiday weekend in the UK so on our home turf at least there's a whole bunch of hauling going on. Even the Burr Pits resident camera and footage guru Commander Rini is strapping on a Type 9 and shifting some trit. How all this ends for the residents of the Golconda is yet to be determined. I can't believe the Artisifer clan have refitted an entire generation ship just out of the goodness of their hearts but it'll be fun watching what happens to the Golconda no matter who ends up sailing off in it once it's filled up and ready to go. Are you planning on joining the hunt for a long lost planet? What do you think of the dev interview on this weeks livestream and are you planning on making some offensive amounts of money shipping tritium? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then O7 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.